Hello everybody and welcome to this special A-level chemistry video where I'm going to make some predictions about what I think is going to come up on paper three this week. To do this I've looked at what was on paper one and paper two and I'm going to tell you which topics I don't think have been assessed very much yet and I'm going to use those topics to predict specific questions that might weave together different aspects of the things yet to be assessed. And I'll also give some advice about multiple choice questions. And in the description, you'll find links to multiple choice question playlists. And there's also a playlist full of videos going through the topics that I'm predicting will come up on Friday. And so you should definitely revise these. If we take a look at the aspects of organic chemistry that were not assessed on paper two, that can help us think about what might be on paper three. So there was no alkanes nor alkenes on paper two. Similarly, no halogenoalkanes or alcohols and not really anything to do with structural isomers either. For year two chemistry, there was nothing about amines and nothing about biochemistry. There was a little bit of carbonyls, but not loads. In terms of required practicals relating to organic chemistry content, there was nothing to do with chromatography, neither was there anything to do with the required practical 10, which is the preparation of an organic substance. So for instance, recrystallization and melting point determination, etc. There was basically nothing from year one in organic chemistry. No periodicity, no group two, no halogens. And therefore also no required practical four testing for ions. There was quite a bit of year two in organic chemistry, but notable by its absence was required practical 11. So that's the different complex ions and what you observe and why when you react them with things such as sodium hydroxide solution, ammonia solution, and sodium carbonate solution. There wasn't loads about transition metals. If you were to prioritize something from the transition metals topic, you might look at catalysis, but this could just be simply a multiple choice question rather than a long question that was standalone about catalysis. In physical chemistry, we covered quite a lot of topics on paper one. Notable by its absence though, was Gibbs free energy and entropy. And I can see that as being a question for paper three, particularly with a graph. Also, there was nothing to do with atom economy and percentage yield. Redox was absent in everything except one little oxidation state calculation. There was some bonding, but mostly that was just shapes of molecules, nothing about intermolecular forces and its connection to melting point and boiling point, and nothing about the different crystal structures, the different types of substance such as covalent, ionic and metallic and their properties. There was not anything to do with KC, although Le Chatelier came up on paper one. Hess's law hasn't come up, but there's been a lot of energetics so far, so Hess's law will probably just simply be a multiple choice question rather than the required practical about it. There has been a lot of rates of reaction and rate equation, but required practicals about iodine clock and the disappearing cross haven't been asked about, but there has been quite a lot of kinetics, so I would suspect that might be restricted to the multiple choice questions as well. There are normally five or six questions in section A on paper three before section B's multiple choice questions. And so what I want to do now is take a look at how some of these topics that have not yet been assessed might be woven together into five or six or seven questions. My first predicted question is to do with Gibbs free energy and entropy. This could be calculating entropy change and then using it to work out delta G or working out the temperature at which a particular reaction becomes feasible. Alternatively, there hasn't been very much emphasis on graph skills so far from the two papers that there's been. So I think plotting a graph maybe of delta G is equal to negative delta S T plus delta H. And I've written it in that particular arrangement because when you plot it like that, you've got a graph of y equals mx plus c. And so negative delta s is the gradient for this line and delta h is the y-axis intercept. And you can use that to look at feasibility and show how it might increase or decrease as temperature increases. And you can work out from the graph the temperature at which 
a reaction becomes feasible and even work out what delta H is from the y-axis intercept. Secondly, I think it's highly likely that chromatography will come up. This, of course, is a required practical as well, which makes it more likely. As a further, you know, making this a, a larger question, they might link it to a particular structure of maybe one or two different substances. That is an opportunity for them to ask about polarity and maybe intermolecular forces and look at which one of those has got the greatest affinity for a solvent. Because, as I said, there's not been very much bonding so far on these two papers. Thirdly, I think... An organic synthesis required practical, so required practical 10. Melting point determination, recrystallization, distillation, separating funnel, suction filtration, all those things haven't been assessed so far. They could be woven together into a paper three question, possibly producing a molecule that hasn't been the focus of any questions so far. So there's not been anything about amines and not been much about carboxylic acids and aldehydes and ketones. They can also make this a larger question by linking this to atom economy and percentage yield, which haven't been asked about yet either. Linked to that, there could be a KC calculation, either to do with an organic mechanism or as a standalone question. It could be connected to any of the organic chemistry topics, really. This is probably not in my top three questions that I, I reckon could come up. It's just not been asked about yet. And this could be a, a smaller question out of the five or six that do come up. My next choice for something that could come up is the testing for ions required practical. Probably only a short question, five or six marks, but there's not been anything about barium sulfates, white precipitate, magnesium hydroxide or silver nitrate and all those associated chemical tests. Also, there's been nothing really to do with the halogens. This is really easy to, to weave it together with the redox topic, particularly with the sodium halide solid reacting with the concentrated sulfuric acid, proving the reducing ability of those different halide ions. There could also be a question about biochemistry, so maybe something to do with proteins or DNA, or maybe both. And then my last prediction is the transition metals and testing for those ions. So we're talking about the different complexes, iron 2+, plus, iron 3+, plus, aluminium and copper, and how they behave when you add solutions of sodium hydroxide, ammonia and sodium carbonate, and the relative acidity of those different complex ions. Of the ones that I've listed here, I think KC and the transition metals are the least likely to come up. And so those others, those are my top tips, my highest priorities for things you should revise before paper three. I would genuinely be really surprised if at least three or four of those didn't come up at the start of paper three. There are always 30 multiple choice questions on paper three chemistry, and it's recommended that you spend 50 minutes in total on them, which works out at about 1.6 minutes per question. But of course, some take longer and some take less time. If these are a particular weakness of yours, it might be a good idea to start with these because then you can spend that dedicated 50 minutes on them and make sure you really do them justice. If it's something that you feel that you are a bit weak on, you might want to check out some of my multiple choice question videos. I've made a playlist of them and a link is going to be in the description for this video. The last thing to say about multiple choice questions is this year on the AS paper, they had a big question series about one particular table of data to do with testing for ions. There was a series of different tests done on a series of different unknown compounds, and they actually asked five consecutive questions about those results from that table. So I could see that thing happening again this year for A-level chemistry on paper three, possibly again to do with testing for ions or maybe to do with the disappearing cross or the iodine clock experiment, a series of related questions about something that's presented to you at the start of the multiple choice section. OK, that's the end of this video. I hope it's been useful to help you prepare and prioritise Ready for Paper 3 at the end of this week. I have put together a YouTube playlist called AQA A-Level Chemistry Paper 3 Predictions. It's full of the topics related to my predictions. 
It's a mixture of exam question walkthroughs and some explanation videos. Okay, that's the end of the video. Good luck, everybody.